So the day has come to finally finish our experiment. We have been growing Christmas moss for 115 days in these net pots and we've been evaluating the differences between growing Christmas moss 100% immersed versus 100% submersed versus growing the Christmas moss in a mixture of immersed and submersed using the ebb and flow feature in our aquarium plant setup. So in just a second here, we're going to do our final weigh-in on day 115 for this moss and we're going to run some stats to see if we can find any statistical differences between these three treatment groups. Now I love Christmas moss. It's amazing to aquascape with. It's amazing to grow baby fish with and it's also a great plant if you're selling this and trying to make a profit selling aquarium plants. And so if you're interested in any one of those three options, knowing exactly the best method to grow in Christmas moss and the fastest method to grow this moss is gonna be really valuable. So that's why I ran this experiment and I'm really excited to see exactly which method grew the moss the best. So let's get into it. Okay, so I've been using this pocket scale to weigh out each and every one of these net pots periodically as a way to kind of graph the growth of this moss over time. So you might be wondering why I'm using individual net pots to grow the moss as opposed to having just three larger containers for each of the treatment groups. And the reason for that is because I want individual data points that I can actually measure independently from one another so that we can actually calculate the average for each of the treatment groups and having multiple net pots in each treatment group is going to allow us the statistical power needed to run some tests and conclusively determine if one of these growing conditions is actually superior to the others. So let's start measuring out these net pots and see exactly how the growth was after 115 days. So to keep the experiment fair for each of the treatment groups, I have been trying to weigh out the net pots in the same methods uh, between all three treatments. Uh, so that I'm not introducing any kind of variability to our results. So for example, the submersed grown net pots are going to be inherently more wet and they're going to hold more water than the other treatment groups. So because of that reasoning, I use a towel to kind of dry down and remove as much water as I can uh, when weighing out these net pots. And to keep track of the growth of the moss throughout the experiment, I've just been logging the results in an Excel spreadsheet uh, that I'll later use in Python to run the stats with. All right, so I just finished weighing out all the net pots and now all I have to do is crunch some numbers in Python and see if we have any statistical differences between our three treatments. All right, but before I do that, it occurred to me that water weight may be a contributing factor to any differences we see between these three different treatments. So in order to account for this, I'm going to attempt to dry out all of this moss and then I'm going to re-weigh them in order to determine the dry weight for each net pot. Once we have this, we'll be able to rerun the stats and be able to see if the water weight was one of the factors causing the differences or if the differences are still present between the three different treatments. So let's do that now and we'll see what we get. Okay, so after baking the moss in the oven for a little bit, I was finally able to weigh out each clump of moss here to get their dry weight. And I've just completed running the stats on all of this. So let's take a closer look at what kind of results we got from this experiment. All right, so to kick things off, I wanna show you this really cool plot. This is called a rain cloud plot, and it's really great at showing the variability between and within each of our groups over the course of the experiment. So you can see on day zero, the variability between our three treatments is all pretty close together, and there's not much of a spread there. And that makes sense because we were weighing out the moss to make sure that each treatment started off with the same amount of moss. Now, as the experiment goes on, you can see that that variability and that spread between our treatments kind of increases. And so what that's telling me is that depending on where these net pots are placed within our growing containers, uh, they might be getting more light or possibly differences in nutrients that are causing some of the net pots to grow at a faster rate than others. Now this doesn't necessarily mean the experiment was bad, it just shows that there is a natural amount of variability that increases as the experiment goes on. All right, so the second plot here is a line plot. This is more of a traditional graph that you would see for this kind of experiment. It's showing the average weight for each of the treatments over the course of the experiment. So as you can see here, all three treatments are growing over the course of the experiment, but some are growing more than others. 
So what's interesting to me when looking at this graph is that at the start of the experiment, the submersed grown moss actually seems to have a slight advantage and is growing faster than some of the other treatments. So what I'm thinking is happening here is that the moss that we started off with was submersed grown, so it was already acclimated to that kind of growing condition. Now, when you're transitioning a moss from submersed to immersed or even this mixed treatment option, it's going to take a little bit of time for that moss to acclimate to those new growing conditions. So I think that's what we're seeing in this graph, where the submersed moss was able to kind of continue growing in an environment that it's used to, whereas the other treatments kind of took a little bit of time to get acclimated. But as you can see, when the graph goes on to the later stages of our experiment, you can see that the mixed grown moss, as well as the immersed grown moss, over time starts to outcompete and starts to grow faster than the subverse moss. Now on this plot, I'm showing the 95% confident interval as the error bars, and that does a pretty good job of showing where there might be statistical significance in the differences. However, to know this for sure, I ran an ANOVA for each of the growing days that I measured the moss, so we can see if there's any statistical differences within our results. All right, so this table I'm showing here shows us the summary of all of the averages from the growing days that we've measured the moss, as well as the results for the ANOVA comparisons. So because we have three treatments, we have three different types of comparisons that we're looking at. We're looking to compare between the immersed grown moss versus submersed, immersed versus mixed, and submersed versus mixed. And to determine significance, we're using a p-value of less than 0.05 to demonstrate where these differences are statistically significant. This is pretty standard for most scientific experiments. And as you can see from the table, we do have quite a bit of statistical significance across a number of growing days. So for example, you can see on day 14, the submersed grown moss actually had a higher weight than both the mixed and the immersed treatments. And after running the ANOVA, you can see that that difference is statistically significant. So that kind of demonstrates that maybe the submersed moss was having an advantage in the earlier stages of this experiment, while the other treatments were slowly starting to acclimate to the growing conditions. But ultimately, as you can see, by the end of the experiment on day 115, the mixed treatment was higher than both the immersed and the submersed, and all of these differences were statistically significant. All right, so now let's take a look to see if drying out the moss changes any of these results. So I'm showing a bar chart here that shows the wet weight versus the dry weight for day 115. Obviously, I can't determine this for any of the other growing days because drying out the moss ends up killing it. So we can only really do this comparison on the final day of this experiment. All right, and also just for some clarity, the wet weight that is shown on this graph here is actually the weight of the moss with the net pot removed. And the two Y axes are scaled differently just to show the trends between the dry versus the wet weight. In fact, once you look at the weights for both the wet and the dry, you can see that water actually makes up between 93 and 94 percent of our moss's wet weight. Similarly to the other graph, we've got the 95 confidence interval bars that clearly show a trend between both the wet weight and the dry weight. Now let's take a look at the ANOVA results to see if there's still statistically significant differences even in the dry weight. Alright, and as you can see in this table here, even after we've dried out and removed the water as a confounding variable for the weight of our moss, despite the weight going down dramatically, we still have statistical differences and the trend remains the same. So what we see is that the mixed treatment actually grew the best, with the immersed treatment growing second best, and the submersed treatment growing the least best. All right, so what does this all mean? Well, these results definitely suggest that the mixed treatment might be the best option if you're looking to grow moss in the most efficient way. My theory behind why the mixed treatment performed the best is because it's getting the best of both worlds from both submersed and immersed conditions. So when it's submersed, it's getting access to a lot of water and nutrients, which is gonna promote the growth of the plant. However, when it gets exposed to the immersed conditions, it's gonna be exposed to the atmospheric CO2, which is also going to help the plant grow faster. So it's possible that the immersed conditions, despite having unlimited CO2, it might not be getting as much nutrients from the water. And on the flip side, the submersed grown treatment is going to be at a slight disadvantage because it's always underwater. So there's gonna be a little bit less light that's gonna reach the plant and it's going to be limited in CO2 that's floating around in the water, which as we know, is going to be at a lower concentration 
than in the atmosphere. All right, so my takeaway from running this experiment is that going forward, I'm probably going to start implementing this mixed treatment option as part of my ebb and flow immersed aquarium plant setup. I really want to start growing some more aquatic mosses and knowing that this mixed treatment option seems to be the most efficient, I'm going to start experimenting a little bit more with that method and seeing if I can dial it in even further to try to maximize the amount of moss growth in my systems. Now this isn't to say that the submersed or the immersed grown methods are bad at growing aquatic moss. In fact, all three treatments really showed some really great growth over the course of the experiment. And despite having statistical differences between the mixed treatment versus some of the other treatments, the differences are still fairly marginal. So I would say if you're looking to grow aquatic mosses, you can pick any one of these three options and get amazing growth with your moss. However, the results are here if you do want to try to maximize the amount of growth that you have in your system. This has been an amazing experiment and I've got a lot of really cool plants coming down the road. So if you want to see another one of my videos, please check this one out here. And until next time, I will see you later.